Alright, what is up my friends? I've been looking forward to this one. Uh, welcome to my cube sleeving stream. This is going to be a, a pretty long series. We're going to do uh, one separate video broken up on YouTube for each color and then obviously all dance. So we're going to be doing this. We're going over my cube and uh, my cube's been in existence for over a decade. Uh, honestly, a really, really long time. My first cube drive ever was with Tom Lapilli at GP San Jose probably 15 years ago at this point. And uh, we built a cube, maintained it. Honestly, you probably had this cube for like 15 years, honestly. Maybe, maybe, I don't even know what years are anymore. But um, painstakingly upkeeped, and uh, I think cube design has caught up in the last few years, whereas most cubes were very, very bad up until a few years ago. Magic Online cube in included. And uh, my cube's not because we worked on it so hard for so long. So my cube is a legacy plus cube. It is a cube where um, there are, the, the goal of this cube is to have an extremely high power level um, without anything that's broken. So there's no channel, uh, there's no power like Moxin or Black Lotus, no Ancestral Recall, you know, Mana Drain, Channel. The cards that feel very, very, that lead to extremely swingy games um, are not in this cube. However, the goal is to have the highest possible power level without the super swingy card. So um, kind of feels like Legacy. Um, the, the mana curve of my cube is very, very low. Uh, this cube is meant to feel like high powered constructed. So there's a uh, you know a lot of one mana spells, a lot of two mana spells. You'll see you, know, you can look glance over the list here that there are very few four, five, and six drops. You know, there's maybe one or two in each color. That's really it. It's also very few planeswalkers. Um, the goal of this cube is to have decks be synergistic, uh, powerful, cheap, efficient, and uh, your goal in this cube is to really draft a deck. There's a lot of themes woven through this, woven woven through the cube, and. Uh, you know, good stuff plus Planeswalkers kind of stuff is discouraged, but possible. Um, and then the way to discourage that is to have a low curve, to have uh, not that many Planeswalkers, and uh, that's the idea. So I'm going to go over every card in the cube as we do the sleeving. Uh, it's going to be kind of the fun part. I want to give a brief overview real fast. I'll be doing some some uh, content on CoolStuffInc.com in the coming month or two. Uh, where I kind of go over cube design as well as my cube. I wrote a six article cube compendium series for Star City Games uh, like seven years ago. It's super out of date at this point, so I'm gonna write a new one. And um, the cube list is online. Uh, the link's in, in the chat. Link will be in the, uh, the YouTube, YouTube comments as well. And again, we're gonna go over every card, every, every, every card at once here. And we'll just jump right in. So we're gonna start with white, of course. So we got a nice little setup here. And um, white is often one of the more underpowered colors in the cube because Frankly, it's just, it's just white. <laughs> white has, you know, historically been one of the more underpowered colors. So the goals for white are, you know, aggression. There are a lot of one drops, a lot of two drops. There are some taxing effects, um, you know, Thalia, things like that. They can kind of slow your opponent down. Uh, evasive, evasive things. There are kind of uh, hammer, you know, hammer it down after an aggro start kind of cards like a Cory Dust Drinker and Armageddon, uh, as well as control cards, you know, Sun Titan, Elspeth Sun's Champion, and uh, things like that. It's also a bit of a prowess theme in white as well, um, where you know the cards like Clever Lumimancer and uh, you know cheap cheap spells, Leona Light Scribe, Clarion Spirit, etc. Kind of a new theme for white, which is really really cool. Let's just jump right in. So again, all these sleeves are being sleeved in the, uh, the BCW Elite Two deck guard sleeves because they are the bomb. And uh, big thanks to BCW for sending me a huge box of them. But let's start. Champion of the Parish. Boom. It has been sleeved. Thanks, uh, Avac. Appreciate it. Champion of the Parish. There are two slight tribal themes in the cube. Uh, humans is by far the biggest one, uh, and Champion of the Parish is one of the better payoffs. There aren't that many human cards, but there are Champion of the Parish, Values Lieutenant. Uh, many of the cards are already humans anyway, so Champion of the Parish is really, really cool. So, I got Champion of the Parish. Put my sleeves over here. And uh, as I mentioned, Clever Lumimancer, there's a bit of a prowess theme as well. So, kind of the goal is that the goal is that there are you know, different themes interwoven that are meant to be not, I am theme A, so I take theme A cards, but a little more flexible than that. So Lumimancer kind of fits into the prowess theme. You know, a card like Dauntless Bodyguard, just a fine card, just a one drop Savannah line with upside, it's a human, which is kind of cool. Uh, new card, Esper Sentinel, also a pretty heavy artifact theme in the cube as well. So Sentinel does a really good job of being a fine card, you know, it's card draw, but it's a human for the human deck. It's a soldier for the soldier. I'm sorry, not soldier. Uh, it's an artifact for the artifact deck while being a reasonable card, kind of a new addition. Also gives white some card draw, which it lacks and helps to punish the spell-based decks. Um, we got Kithian here. It's another, you know, human Savannah line. Obviously, Kithian's a Planeswalker too, which is kind of cool. Uh, just kind of a cool one drop. Kind of a, the kind of card where Kithian never saw too much play in Constructed. Um, but there's a, a kind of card like Kithian where 
it never really had a home in Constructed, but it's a very reasonable card. It's Savannah Lion with a lot of upside, and um, it's kind of cool, and then Cube ends up being a really cool place for it, you know, for a decent number of cards where they just never found a place. Mardu Woe Reaper is kind of a cool one. This is kind of your Cube gem, where you find the cards that never really took off and constructed and look a little weird, but fill a really good role. It's, it's a Savannah Lion, it's a human, a little bit of graveyard hate, a little bit of life gain. This is like a perfect kind of cube card. Uh, you know, you, you need one drops, you need, uh, you need humans, it fills those roles. And again, very, very important for your cube to have a, a, a good mana curve. The biggest problem with the Magic Online cubes typically is there's like two one drops and like 17 five drops in them. So you have like your fifth copy of Nyssa you know, you have your six, six drop and like, there's no, you can't fill out the bottom parts of your curves until it turns into mid range snore fest. So really got to have these low curve cards. I believe there are 10 one drops in white, uh, 11, 11 one drops in white. Next up, of course, is mother runes, which honestly is almost obnoxiously good. Um, there's no giver of runes in my cube. Giver of runes is not a human. Mother of runes is, um, really, really good. I could see honestly me putting a giver over it just for like a fun factor thing, but Champion, Soul of the Pantheon, honestly, a card that's like fine. Just another another Savannah Lion effect. A little life gain, a little extra value here and there. Nothing super exciting on that one. Isamaru missed the cut. Yeah, Isamaru's not in the cube anymore. It's not a human, so. David Inspector, obviously insane. Freaking love these old border uh, old border cards. It's so freaking cool for the cube. I bought them. I have never bought Blungy cards in my entire life, and I, I bought these, so. Toolcraft Exemplar, one of the non-humans. Uh, Strong artifact theme, my cube, and the artifact theme is not just mana rocks and worm coil engines. There's a lot of aggressive artifact cards as well, cards like cranial plating, arcbound ravagers. So it's possible to draft kind of an affinity aggro artifact deck. It's also possible to draft like the big tinker deck too. So trying to keep, again, trying to keep variety in all of the colors is a big thing. We see this in red a lot in a lot of cubes, where the red section is just a thousand lightning bolts, a thousand goblin guides, and if you just take a random red card in every pack, your deck is fine. Whereas in green, there's, you know, Primeval Titan, there's Wall of Roots, there's Avacyn's Pilgrim, there's aggressive cards, you know, and you can't just take a random green card back and work. So definitely a super cool one. This will be on YouTube. Yes, this will be on YouTube. So Exemplar. And our last one drop is a new one. And it's a little awkward as a spirit warrior, not a human, but this is like one of the best Savannah lines ever printed. It's so bad in standard because of Lovestruck Beast and Stomp, but really, really good card. Really, really good card. Super awesome. So... That's a nice one. The yeah, old border cards have been nut. That's our one drops. Moving on to our two drops here. A new entry in Clarion Spirit. I love this card. And I love this sort of prowess, uh, non-creature spell, double spell mechanic in white. Um, in my cube, it's kind of centralized in white and red. Uh, there are a number of red cards that kind of do the kind of pump haste stuff too. Kind of the prowess effects. Clarion Spirit, just an awesome, awesome card. Super cool. I just love this card. It's a great design. Finding ways to give white card advantage and uh, and things like that is very important, and Clarion Spirit does a job really, really well. And speaking of new cards here, Leon and Light Scribe, a card that hasn't really made uh, an impact in Constructed, but again, a powerful card, fits this sort of prowessy strategy. Uh, we'll see some of the enablers for that uh, coming up as well, but really, really cool one, honestly. Uh, I like this card a lot. White is good at going wide, and you can just see how, how well, obviously, Spirit and Light Scribe work, well work together because they do... They want the same things. They want cheap spells, cantrips, and they pump, make tokens, etc., etc. And uh, this is kind of a new feature of my cube, and uh, it's played out pretty well so far. I'm pretty, pretty excited about it. Luminarc Aspirant, just a good card. It's a human. There's no real plus one, plus one counter cube or anything in my stream, but um, just a cool human. Now this next one's really cool. This next one is uh, one of those weird cards that you don't usually see in cubes. Uh, our next card is Mere Smith, and uh, it is a human. Which is nice. Mirrorsmith's a 2-1 for 2. Or if you cast an artifact, pay 1, make a 1-1 one, one token. This card is busted and limited. Uh, never really saw playing constructed because there wasn't really a deck for it. But again, I have a my cube supports like an artifact aggro deck. Um, and this card is really, really good in a deck like that. And uh, plays all well toolcraft exemplar. You know, you get signal pest, making tokens, going wide, tangle wire, etc. etc. Just a really cool, fun card. You know, it's a it's a hair below the bar. But it fits the uh, the synergies and stuff like that. And just a card that I like a lot. It's cheap. It's efficient. Does stuff. I'm all about this card. All about this card. Uh, creatures first. Spells. My, my, my cube is organized. Uh, creatures then spells. So our next card is another really good example of a flexible cube card in Season Hollow Blade. Kind of a new card. And it might just look like an aggro creature. But this is also a discard outlet. So if you're a black-white deck and you're looking for a way to get cards into the graveyard, 
This does that too. It's a human. And again, finding cards like this is really important for your cube. When you find a card that can fulfill multiple roles. Um, you know, there's one of the things I don't like about like the Splinter Twin combo in cube is that it's so parasitic. It's just like, all right, I need to get Splinter Twin or Kiki Jiki. I need to get Pestermite or Deceiver Exarch. And they don't do much otherwise, but here they are. I don't like cards like that. I like the cards that are more flexible. So Hollow Blade can go in your aggro deck. It can go in your human deck. It can go in your reanimator deck. It can go into a lot of different things. If you need cards in the graveyard and just a good card, honestly. So like this card a lot, super cool. Uh, Seeker of the Way is here again for the Prowess deck. Uh, another solid card, also a human and just fits into the Prowess theme we've already seen already. Uh, cheap spells, you know, there are some cantrips in white. Um, obviously other, other colors as well too. The Prowess deck can be blue, white. It can be red, white. Um, all three colors occasionally, but solid card, like Seeker of the Way a lot, so a lot of playing standard back in this day. Stoneforge is obviously great. Um, there are, I believe, eight equipments in the cube, and uh, even back when there were only like like five or six, this card was still added to the cube. It's just, it's just way too good. It's way too good. And uh, my cube does draft a lot better uh, as, as an eight-player cube because it is so synergy-based, um, but, you know, that's just, you know, you don't always get eight players, but Thalia, no, no introduction for Thalia. Obviously, Thalia is really, really good. Thalia's Lieutenant, a card that I've seen in more and more cubes lately. I think we were, we were on this one really, really early. And again, I think cube design has really improved a lot over the last five years. I think five years ago, my cube was like miles ahead of everyone, everyone else's cube. Not to like sound pompous or anything, but like I think we just spent so much time on it and, and uh, so on. Now cubes are much more, more balanced. You see this card in a lot of cubes. You see these, gen these general de design philosophies in a lot more cubes. So super awesome card, plenty of humans, good aggressive card, good build around. And again, this sort of card makes your draft interesting because do you take the the really good non-human card or do you take the slightly worse human card? So you get you know, more interesting decisions in the draft. Uh, love it, like it a lot. Wall of Omens, just a solid defensive card. A good control card. There's also a slight blink theme as well. Uh, cards like Ephemerates um, and Friends, Restoration Angel. Just a solid defensive card. I think you really fancy there. Moving on to our three drops, we have a Blade Splicer, another card that fulfills multiple roles in this cube. Uh, is a human. It is a fine aggressive card. It's multiple bodies in one, so you have you know venerated locks it on things like that. It's an artifact for the artifact aggro decks. It's a blinkable card for the blink decks. Again, just a, the perfect kind of cog. You know, I'd much rather see this card in the cube with a bunch of cool things to do with it than I'd rather see you know the fifth copy of Elspeth. You know, Elspeth five. You know, or whatever it is. You know, I think it's just that's just bad cube design, and this is good cube design. Um, flexible card fulfills a lot of roles, and it's fine on raid as well. So. We got Bremaz here, a card that gets pickets poo pooed a lot, uh, but very solid card. It makes tokens, goes wide. Just a solid individual threat. Just kind of a fine card, kind of hard to kill. You know, we see this card go last in Magic Online cubes a lot, but that's because those cubes are more about different things. And I think that when you have a more low curve aggro deck, Bremaz can be a pretty sweet card. Uh, there are no real anthems in white because they're not powerful enough, but newcomer here in Spellbinder. Again, human, blinkable card, aggressive card, just solid disruption. Pretty cool. We get Flicker Wisp here in the brand new border. Again, another solid card. That's also cool. Blinky stuff. So, uh, you know, we see the synergies here with Blink and just also a fine card in general. So, Flicker Wisp, pretty cool. Monastery Mentor, again, not only a good card just in general, but extra good because, as I mentioned, we're, we're kind of have this prowess theme in white where we want to be doing the prowess thing. If you take Mentor and you don't draw Mentor, you still have other prowess cards too. So, that's kind of like a deck, which is really cool. Also, a fine control film and finisher. It's a really good card. Mentor. Ranger Captain of Eos. Uh, just a good card. It's a human. There's tons of one drops in the cube. Um, there are some scenarios where you want to get like carrying feeders or sack outlet or some sort of like unique one drop. Um, you can also get walking blister and things like that, which is kind of cool. Just a really, really solid card, obviously. You know, there are a lot of good cards in the cube that aren't, you know, all synergy, but the goal is to have them fit some synergy as well. And I agree. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big synergy guy. I'm a big synergy overpower kind of guy, and uh, my cube design reflects that drastically. You know, I want to see good synergy. I want to see cool, cool combos of cards coming together to do cool things. Recruiters is cool. It's a human. It's a search effect. It's kind of a cool card. Skyclave is a huge addition for white in the cube. Uh, one of the best cube cards printed in a really long time. Just a really, really good white card. Gives white some removal. It's flexible. Uh, just an awesome card. Just an awesome, awesome card. Moving on to our four drops. Hero of Blade Hold. Uh, some cards are just good. It is a human. Uh, it does not make human tokens, unfortunately, but some cards are just good. Good for go wide decks. Just a good card in general. Um, 
Yep. Next card here is a, a card that I like a lot. You don't often see in cubes. And this is the kind of card that is really good in my cube and often not good in less efficient cubes because Winter Orb is not as good when every player has five drops in their deck, you know? So Hakori is very, very good. Sort of like a more fair uh, Armageddon. Uh, it's a creature also. You know, it's a Winter Orb on a creature basically. And super cool card. There are no Moxin in my cube, so there's less artifact mana. There's some Sigints and stuff, or, but there's no actual Moxin. So, you know, you're playing an aggro deck. You need that, you know, hammer at home on turn four, slow them down kind of card, and this is it. The entire thing will be on YouTube, yes. The entire thing will be on YouTube. And no inner sleeves for me. We only do outer sleeves. I beat the crap out of my cards, and these are Elite 2 deck card sleeves. Info will be in the uh, description as well. Ranger of Eos, another awesome card. Uh, again, finding white avenues for card advantage is really important, and Ranger does that uh, in the way white wants to do it. It finds creatures, tons of one-drops in my cube. Another card that's kind of bad in a lot of cubes because there aren't enough one drops and it's really, really good in my cube because there are a million one drops in my cube and it's also a human, et cetera, et cetera. Also good, 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 cool thing to blink if you have enough one drops. Resto, again, great card, also kind of a blinky card. So we're seeing the themes here, you know, white themes are just basic, aggressive, disruptive stuff. Also some blink stuff, also some human stuff, also some prowess stuff. So Resto, get up on our, into the five. So you have Revelark here and uh, really cool card. You can do some combo stuff with this. You know, there's like Revelark, um, I actually just cut Karmic Guide because there used to be like some loops of that, which is kind of cool. But uh, just kind of a cool card, good value card. You can definitely do some blinky stuff with it, which is kind of cool. Uh, a card that's definitely not aged as well as some other cards, but I like Rebel Arc a lot. Just really, really cool. And part of the thing about Cube is that like it's your freaking Cube. You know, you put put, put, what, you, put, put what you want into it. Speaking of what you want. Me and Venerated Loxodon. I freaking love Venerated Loxodon. And again, another card. Uh, I have Talismans too, but we'll get to that. Another card that it would, would, be, would be bad in other cubes, but very, very good in my cubes. My curve is so low. And that's like kind of the biggest thing you're going to keep hearing over and over again. Um, the curve of my cube is very low. The mana curve in white, we have 11 one drops, 9, I'm sorry, 10 two drops, 8 three drops, 4 four drops, 2 five drop, or 1 five, 2 five drops, and 1 six drop. So super, super low curve. And again, that makes for decks that feel like constructed. You feel like you're playing constructed legacy. You're not playing just like, here's my cards. Here's my mythic rare. Here's my mythic rare kind of magic. And our last white creature is Sun Titan. It's our one six drop in white and a uh, super fun card, fun card to blank, uh, fun card for like recursive decks and a good, good control card as well. Uh, but also kind of a build around. It's not just like Bane Slayer Angel or whatever. You know, you have to do something, some stuff with uh, Titan to make it good. So that is the creatures for white. That is the creatures. And now we have our non-creatures. There are obviously less non-creatures in white because frankly, uh, you know, white is more of a creature color for sure. And uh, we'll start off here with uh, one of the classics, of course, Path to Exile and it's friend, brand new old border, which is awesome. Path is just great. You know, no real introduction for Path necessary. Oh crap. My little thingy stopped going. Sorry about that. Like little scroll thing and then uh swords of course obviously uh thing my cube is uh the anti-pimp cube so uh, i have a lot of gold border cards in my cube uh just keep the price down honestly and then uh my most expensive cards are proxied you know people like to foil out their cube and stuff like that that's not me i want my cube to be cheap i want to play with it i want to beat it up my cube is a is an object to be played with not an object to be observed so cool uh gold border world champ stack swords of plowshares Get off my plane. Everyone loves a good Mana Tithe. Everyone loves a freaking good Mana Tithe. And uh, love this card. And again, another card that's good in my cube where it's not as good in others because everything's so cheap and you can really like, you know, press your advantage early on. Um, I guess it's not, I guess like you're, there's less six drops, so it's, you're not going to spike people as often, but I just love Mana, I love Mana Tithe. It's a super, super awesome card. Up next is Legion's Landing. And there's no vampire stuff in the cube, but there is kind of like go wide stuff. Just a good card. It's a really good card, good for aggressive decks. Kind of a cool uh, cool mana sink and so on and so forth. It's a good card, just a good card. Hemorrhoid, as I mentioned, there are some blink synergies. Nothing crazy. Uh, I considered putting putting Soul Herder in, but decided against it. Um, it was a little too narrow, but uh, Femorrhoid is just a really, really powerful card. We see it in Historic now, we see it in Modern. The kind of card that's like really, really powerful, but doesn't always have a home. Um, and there are some blinky stuff, and just like a fine card in general too, honestly. It's just a very, very solid card. So we got a Femorrhoid. We got Enlightened Tutor, and of course there's, you know, Recurring Nightmare and some other uh, 
powerful enchantments in the queue, sneak attack you want to go find. A little awkward in white, because typically there aren't many white enchantments you want to find with this card. But uh, just like the tutor effects are very important. Uh, you know, you got to put together a deck in my cube, and tutor effects help you do that. So Light and Tutor is, uh, is here. You can see how it's, it's, it's so worn down. This card's been in the cube for literally ever. New addition here. New addition here. What's up, uh, Jared? Thanks for the reset. Appreciate that. Someone has to explain to me what a two bird is, because I don't really know. I've heard that before. And then a new one here, Defiant Strike. And again, this is the kind of card you will see in my cube. You will rarely see in other cubes. And this is the kind of card that I think makes the cube. Uh, this is a very simple card. You know, one mana, plus and plus so, draw a card, instant. But this is the kind of card that makes a magic deck into a magic deck. All right? This is what makes a, makes a deck not just a pile of, you know, mythic rares and planeswalkers and so on and so forth. Um, some decks really want this card. It's going to be cheap to trigger all your prowess stuff. Um, you know, it's a cantrip, puts cards in the graveyard, and it's just cheap. And this is this is it. This is like the, the, the philosophy of my cube in a single card. We'll see more of these in different colors, you know, but when you have that, uh, that clever Lumancer, that uh, Clarion Spirit, and that Monster Mentor in play, you draw Defiant Strike, you're going to be very, very happy. And again, not every deck's going to want it either. And it's also a super low floor, too. You can just play it in your aggro deck and just get a get a card off it and draw a card. So this is the kind of card I think that makes cubes. And I think it's the kind of card that people miss out on the most. We'll see a lot of these across all of the colors uh, as we go through. So that's our white one drops, white two drops, balance. Um, I don't have any altered cards in my cube, but this is just the balance that I got. Um, I don't know where it came from. Honestly, John Glass, you have any idea where the uh, this balance came from? But um, balance is obviously great, super powerful card. And uh, just a fun, just a classic fun cube card. Not much to say there. We got Vanishing Light here. Uh, definitely need to keep the uh, removal spells flexible to be able to deal with Planeswalkers and everything else. And, uh, you know, very similar to our next card in Council's Judgment, but I think having multiples of its effect is good. Uh, so, we got Vanishing Light. Judgment's better, but hard to cast. Did I choose Banishing Light over O-Ring to avoid the Flicker stuff? Yeah, I think that um, Banishing Light is just a much cleaner card rules-wise, so uh, I chose Banishing Light instead. Um, Judgment's obviously the same idea, just like real similar. We got History of Benalia here, and uh, kind of a solid aggressive card. Kind of cool with blank effects like Flicker Wisp. You can't blank it with too much stuff, but Flicker Wisp is kind of a cool one. Uh, and then uh, some multiple threats. There are a number of knights across the colors just kind of randomly. Um, just a good card. Nothing great, but it's a good aggressive kind of white weenie card. And uh, this is a good card also as far as like card advantage in white, which is kind of cool. So solid card, nothing crazy, but again, a kind of card that's better in my cube because you're curving out usually. So when you have a one drop and a two drop, and uh, you play history on turn three. It's a lot better than history being your first play. Same idea. Good because the cube is cheap. Not like an essential card, but definitely fine. Maul of Skyclave's new addition here um, adds to the equipment package. And also, it's just a good way to give you reach. You know, if you're playing Savannah Lions in your deck, you do need some reach as well. So, Maul gives that in white. Uh, White's the color that often lacks reach. And Maul does that pretty well. We've seen this card in standard a lot. And um, just a solid card. Just a solid card. Spectral Procession is next. And... Um, Again, just a very, very powerful card. Kind of like a strong incentive to go into heavy white and be white weenie. This is sort of like your payoff for being white weenie. You know, if you're going to commit to playing a lot of white, white, to a lot of white sources in your deck, this is a great card for it. Um, there isn't really any Anthem effects in white aside from Gideon, Ally, Zendikar emblem. But there is like Signal Pest, Hero, Blade Hold. There are ways to kind of use your creatures to go wide. There's also some Sacrifice stuff in black too, which is kind of cool. Um, this card's a little... Uh, this card's a little... A little iffy at times, but solid card, solid card, and uh, obviously kind of a payoff for uh, for being uh, mono white or very close to it. You can see Armageddon here is literally you know wearing at the seams because it's been cast so much, um, and uh, the gold border world champs cards. If you don't know what these are, they used to submit the they used to have these decks you could buy. You buy the whole world champ deck. It wasn't legal, but you could play with it. And uh, Armageddon's an absolute classic. I only have Armageddon in my cube. I don't have Ravages of War. I try to keep the uh, the duplicate effects down, um, so there aren't just multiple versions of things. So if you want the Geddon, you got to get the Geddon kind of thing. Um, there, that is broken occasionally, but Geddon is one of those effects where I think one Geddon and one Hakori is more interesting than two Geddons in the cube. So, absolute classic, super super important, and again, much better in my cube because there are no signets. I'm mean, sorry, I'm not signets. Uh, there are no Moxen, and again, the curves are low, so you can get that really fast start and then play Geddon. Now, Planeswalkers in my cube. I do, Jared. Yeah, here. Um, 
Planeswalkers and my cube have always had a point of contention. So I think that one of the biggest mistakes that cube designers make and the Magic Online cubes make is having too many Planeswalkers. Um, there were like 48 Planeswalkers in one of the recent Magic Online cubes, which makes me want to vomit. Um, because when, you're, when your queue is full of Planeswalkers and five drops, it just becomes mid-range soup. You know, my three Planeswalkers versus your three Planeswalkers. It's just not fun. That's not, some players enjoy that kind of magic. I don't enjoy that kind of magic. Planeswalkers should be special, should be powerful, and should be the, you know, the, the spice of a top of your deck, not your main deck concern. So there, are, for a long time in my cube, there was only one Planeswalker in each color. That was my rule. And there was a few Planeswalkers in multicolor and colorless. There've been a lot of good walkers printed recently. So I've decided to change that a little bit. And I've also decided to change that for white because I think white is a color that needs a little help. And there are two good, two really good white planeswalkers. So first is Gideon Allies and Akar. Um, this card is absolutely busted, obviously. It was a major player in standard. A card that I think is historically underplayed in modern. Um, just a really, really, really powerful card. Um, just super, super good. And it's also an anthem, which is kind of cool too, but super, super powerful card. And uh, speaking of beat the crap cards, it's funny, these gold borders, when they wear down, they turn like neon green. Uh, that's not intentional. It just, I don't know, just the World Champs cards. This Raz, this, this, this Raz has been cast many, many, many times over the years. And uh, so Wrath of God, just a classic, of course. Only Wrath, uh, oh, there's, there's two Wraths, I'm sorry. But again, more for the control decks, don't have a ton of Wraths, but, and then uh, that's Wrath. Now, moving on to our other Planeswalker in white, we have Elspeth Sun's Champion. Now, more of a standard expensive card, but I wanted to give a card to the control decks. You know, I have a Planeswalker that was good in control decks, kind of a great finisher. I also just freaking love this card. Um, just like, obviously a card I cast a ton back in the day. You know, for a while in the SG Tour, my signature play was play my ninth land, play Elspeth, say go, dissolve your spell. So, super good control card, goes super wide too, and just an awesome card. I just love this card. You don't want a million of these, but I think the really best ones do add a lot to your cube. So, like else with a lot. Two more cards here, and one of them is a really new one. Oops. Sorry. Shit. We're good. One of them is a new one that's honestly just like one of the best cards printed in the last, you know, year, few years uh, in Prismatic Ending. This card's unreal. Uh, just unreal good. And, um, you know, it's kind of cool in cube because there obviously are things that cost a little more. You know, in modern, everything costs one or whatever, but, or legacy, but... In my cube, the curve's very low, but there are some bigger things too. Uh, just super powerful card. Kind of weird because it's a white card, but it's not just a white card. Um, so like you could make an argument this card should be in like the multicolor section maybe. Uh, but, you know, we'll we'll see some of those kind of oddball cards that are hard to, to typecast. But for now, it's in white and the card's really, really good. And our last white card is another Wrath, but it's a kind of Wrath that has a, a theme to it. So Marshall Coup and... You know, if you're a big mana deck, this is a great finisher. Uh, if you're an artifact mana deck, it's a great finisher. Um, if you're a creature deck, you can play this card for tokens also, which is not super great, but I like this card a lot. Big, big white haymaker, and um, and that one's sweet as well. You can see the lands in the screen right now. Uh, we'll get to the lands in a little bit. We'll get to the lands in a little bit. I'm gonna do lands in the entire land section, but in the cube, as, as it's on the, the cube call where the lands are in the, the white section. So we'll get to those in a little bit. So that's white. We're going to move right along to blue here, uh, but YouTube folks, that'll be in a different video. So YouTube folks, I love you. Like, comment, subscribe. I want to hear your comments on this, on all the cards, the cube. What? Why isn't this card in the cube, Jim? Why is it? Why is it? Uh, I want to hear all your comments. All right, YouTube, I love you. Like, comment, subscribe. YouTube, look for blue coming up next stream. We'll be, we'll be right there.